All right, buckle up, because today we're diving into a topic that's surprisingly complex and, let's be honest, often mishandled. Stakeholder expectations. And you know, what better way to unpack this than with a real-life case study from Guy W. Wallace's article, Managing and Mismanaging Stakeholder Expectations? Oh, a case study, you say. Those are always eliminating, especially when they involve, say, a wedding. You read my mind. Wallace opens with a story about a groom planning his big day, the picture-perfect wedding, and of course, that includes transportation. Because who doesn't love a stylish wedding day arrival, right? What, what did he have in mind? Four big white Lincolns. Classic. He books them six months in advance, called again two weeks before the big day just to confirm, make sure everything's still on track. What would the rental company say? No problem. At least that's what they told him every single time. Oh boy. I've heard that no problem before. It usually precedes a problem, a big one. You're right to be suspicious. The big day arrives, the groom, full of anticipation, walks into the rental car company, and they hit him with the dreaded, we don't have those B-U-T, no problem. The kiss of death, that, <laughs> but no problem. So what happened? What did they scrounge up for the poor groom? Let's just say it wasn't the grand entrance he'd envisioned. They managed to cobble together one white Lincoln, one blue one, and a one red one. Talk about a mismatched set. Oh, no. Talk about a wedding day disaster. You know, this is more than just a transportation snafu. This was the groom's vision, meticulously planned, completely disregarded. Exactly. And that's where this seemingly simple situation transforms into a powerful lesson. It highlights the emotional impact of completely disregarding expectations, the broken can trust, that ripple effect of disappointment. And let's be real, that car rental company, their reputation, forever tarnished in the minds of anyone who hears this story. It's a stark reminder that mismanaged expectations can have far-reaching consequences way beyond the initial situation. Absolutely. And it underscores why understanding the needs and expectations of your stakeholders is absolutely crucial, not just in business, but in every aspect of life. So let's unpack this idea of stakeholders a bit, because it's not always as obvious as it seems. In this case, it's the bride and groom, sure, yeah. but it goes beyond the happy couple, right? Oh, absolutely. Stakeholders can be anyone who is impacted by a decision or an action. In this case, it's the wedding party, their families, even guests who've probably heard about the grand transportation plans. It's like that butterfly effect, isn't it? <laughs> One seemingly small oversight can have these ripple effects that impact people you didn't even realize were part of the equation. Precisely. And it really drives home the importance of thinking holistically about the potential impact of our decisions and actions on all those involved. It's so easy to get caught up in the immediate situation, right? Like you can almost picture the car rental company laser focused on their bottom line, potentially overbooking those white Lincolns. And that short-sighted approach can lead to long-term damage, both to relationships and to reputation. It's a high price to pay for a short-term gain. Speaking of a short-sighted approach, mm -hmm. what's the deal with this constant over-promising and under-delivering that seems to be so prevalent, especially in certain industries? Was this car rental company being intentionally misleading or just plain careless? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> and there are a lot of potential answers. Sometimes it is a deliberate tactic, like you said, a bait-and-switch in the name of profit. But other times, it feels like it's just a lack of foresight, you know? a failure to plan for contingencies. Exactly. Maybe they did overbook those white Lincolns thinking, ah, uh, it'll all work out without having a solid backup plan in place. Or maybe it was just a breakdown in communication between departments, like sales promising something that operations couldn't deliver. The point is they made a promise they couldn't keep. And that's where the real trouble begins. All right, so how do we avoid becoming a cautionary tale in someone else's business management article? How do we break this cycle of mismanaged expectations and actually get it right? So before the break, we were dissecting this wedding car fiasco, and it really highlighted how crucial it is to manage stakeholder expectations effectively. But how do we do that in a practical sense? It's easy to say, be honest, be upfront. But what about those situations where you know you can't deliver exactly what's being asked? What then? That's where Wallace's next strategy comes in the art of the trade-off. And he illustrates this with a really clever analogy, talking about letting a well-meaning but completely unskilled, like totally clueless brother-in-law 
build a porch on your house. Oh, no. I can already see where this is going. Mm -hmm. Splintered wood, crooked railings, the whole neighborhood talking about it for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's his point. Sometimes agreeing to every demand, even if you have the best intentions, can actually do more harm than good. So it's about having those conversations with your stakeholders, helping them understand the constraints, the limitations, and then figuring out alternative solutions together. So it's about having those sometimes difficult conversations up front, yeah. right? Instead of just setting these unrealistic expectations that you might not be able to meet, you're saying, okay, this is what you're hoping for, I get it, but here's the reality of what we can actually do. Exactly. And that's where clear, proactive communication is so important. You have to keep your stakeholders informed, especially when challenges arise or if there are changes to the plan because silence, well, silence only leads to anxiety and mistrust, right? Oh, 100%. It's like that feeling when you've sent a text and someone leaves you unread. Your mind starts to race. You imagine all the worst case scenarios. Exactly. But if you're communicating openly, it builds trust. Even if the news isn't exactly what the stakeholder wants to hear, it shows you're trying, that you care. Wallace also talks about offering alternatives whenever possible. So for instance, in this car rental predicament, they could have said, look, we can't guarantee those four white Lincolns on that specific date, but we can reserve them if you're able to pick them up a day or two early. Right. It's about being solution oriented, showing them that you're invested in finding something that works, even if it means a bit of flexibility or compromise. Exactly. It shows you're not just throwing your hands up in the air saying, too bad, not my problem. Right. You're in it with them trying to find a workable solution. Which brings us to another crucial point, contingency planning. Because as much as we love a good plan, life, as we know, often has other ideas. Mm. Didn't Wallace talk about this as well? He did. He emphasized it, actually. It's something we often overlook. We get so fixated on plan A that we forget about plan B or C or even D. In this wedding car scenario, a contingency plan might have involved having a backup transportation option or just communicating very clearly to the groom about the potential need for vehicle substitutions, you know, just in case. Right, right. It's about expecting the unexpected. Because, let's face it, things rarely go exactly according to plan, especially when you're dealing with multiple moving parts. Exactly. And being able to adapt, to be flexible, to find creative solutions when things inevitably go sideways. Well, that is an invaluable skill. Have you ever been on the receiving end of, well, let's just call it subpar expectation management? Maybe a contractor who went way over budget or a friend who's constantly canceling plans at the last minute. Oh, absolutely. I think we've all been there at some point. It's frustrating. It's disappointing. And it can really do a number on trust. It really can. And that just reinforces why mastering this whole expectation management thing is so important, not just in professional settings, but also in our personal lives. It's about setting those realistic expectations from the get go, communicating clearly and consistently and being being prepared to navigate those inevitable bumps in the road. You know, it's amazing how these seemingly small situations, like a wedding car mix up, can teach us so much about communication and expectation management. Because it's not just about avoiding a disaster, is it? It's about setting the stage for things to run smoothly, for building those strong relationships. Exactly. And you know what I found really interesting about Wallace's approach? He doesn't just focus on preventing negative outcomes. He also talks about the positive impact of managing expectations well. It's not just about putting out fires. It's about proactively building trust and strengthening those connections. It's like that age old saying under promise and over deliver, right? Uh. It seems so simple, yet so many people and businesses especially just don't seem to get it. Maybe they think they're exceeding expectations, but in reality, they're just meeting the bar they should have been aiming for all along. That's a really good point. And think about it. When someone truly exceeds your expectations, how does it make you feel? Valued. Yeah. Like they actually listen, they get me, and they went above and beyond. Exactly. It creates this really positive dynamic of feedback loop of trust and goodwill. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, the takeaway isn't just about avoiding those wedding day car fiascos. It's about being proactive, setting realistic expectations right from the start, communicating clearly and honestly, and, you know, being willing to have those tough conversations when you need to. Because those unaddressed expectations, they have a funny way of coming back to bite us, don't they? They really do. And often when we least expect it with, shall we say, amplified consequences, so as we navigate the ups and downs of life and work and everything in between, let's remember this. Mastering expectation management, it's a journey, not a destination. It's about constantly trying to refine our approach, learning from our experiences, and approaching every interaction, big or small, as an opportunity to build trust 
and create those stronger, more positive connections. And who knows, maybe we'll even save a future groom from a mismatched fleet of wedding day vehicles. Thank you.